This is Patrick with the Mad Bros Media Zoom Show and Podcast. And I'm here today with one of the special guests of American Horror Story and Control-Alt-Delete, Naomi Grossman. Yay! Yay! How you doing, Naomi? <laughs> I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. How you been holding up with the COVID? You know, what did somebody say? It's like... Um, it's like a roller coaster, mm. uh, but we're not all on the same part of the ride, you know? So some people, you know, are in the very, are in the front seat and they're like, you know, feeling it harder than anybody else. Others are kind of in the back, like, well, no big deal. But, you know, the people that are going up sometimes are going down. There's, mm. they, it, I don't know if that analogy is making sense, but it's true. I will say like, this was really hard at first. Like I, I would say the first 24 hours was the worst because I, I you know, I'm like, I live alone. I'm single. I, I have, you know, I don't have my family's thousands of miles away. Like it was, um, it was, uh, I, I wasn't sure how this was going to go <laughs> from, um, you know, one hour to the next. Mm -hmm. Whereas now at this point, I'm not going to lie. I, I mean, it's not my favorite like period of human history by a long shot, but oh, yeah. I've actually managed to create um, something really, really, really proud of, which quite honestly probably wasn't going to happen uh, in the same way had I had all my, you know, parties and screenings and, you know, red carpet affairs to distract me. So the fact that there was literally nothing to do, but, you know, get creative and, and, and do what I felt like I needed to do. Um, I'm ultimately, I'm really, I'm really proud. Like I've got something to really like show for this time in my life. And, um, and I think it's going to be a, a big hit. So, um, so no complaints, not right now. I mean, had you asked me, you know, last March, yeah. um, you would have gotten a different answer. But, you know, that's before I'd managed to get busy yet. Yeah, you were lucky to get out of there. It's like you came over to Pierce College, did the lecture, and then went to Seattle. And Seattle was where the, the real danger was. So it was good that you oh got out of there in time. I remember that. I was, uh, it was one of those things where I remember asking my, you know, college agent, like, do you think this is happening? And he, you know, like the news is saying, you know, X, Y, Z. And he's like, I mean, if you want, I can ask, but it's possible that they'll cancel on you. And don't you want to get paid? And of course I was like, yes. So he's like, well, then I just get on a plane and go and, and hope that the, the, the university's open. And sure enough, it was. Mm -hmm, so yeah. that was good. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I'm glad I waited around to get paid because I, might not have otherwise yeah. uh but yeah i remember people saying like are you crazy you're like you're going to seattle don't you know that's like the epicenter of this thing and sure enough it was the wildest thing like i you know i left la and i remember i'd never seen lax look like that before you know what i mean it's a, mm. it's a giant yeah, i think i saw a picture on your facebook it was like totally empty oh my god it was yeah. a ghost town mm. and um I mean, now it's, well, I don't know. I haven't traveled since, so I don't know what it's like, but I'd never seen it look like that. And sure enough, I want to say there were, you know, maybe five of us on the flight. Mm. And um, you guys were all separated. You weren't all sitting together. We were all separated. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and I remember then when I came home, I didn't have any food in my fridge because I never do. Mm. Uh, because again, I live alone. I've got a very active lifestyle. I'll, I'll grab food at, there'll be a, like somebody passing around appetizers at the party I'm going mm. to. And like, who needs, who needs dinner? You know, yeah. I'll, be, I'll, I'll find food. I'm a forager, you know, but so sure enough, I came home, I had no food in the fridge and somebody said, you know, you need to go to the grocery store like now, because there already, there isn't even food at the grocery. And sure enough, I'll never forget it. I was like, this is the twilight zone. Like what happened? Yeah. Oh I, yeah. It was. <laughs> I was like, no well, toilet paper at all. <laughs> What's that? No toilet paper at all on the shows at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> there. Right. Yeah. Oh my God. Crazy. Yeah. But no, it's um ultimately, like I said, I've, I think we are sort of uh, creatures of, um, 
uh, habit. And so I think the fact that I, um, you know, all of a sudden my like routine got disrupted. I went from being, you know, wearing dresses and at f fabulous affairs to mm -hmm. wearing the same pajamas, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, all day, every day in and out, you know, it was, it, it was, it took some adjusting, but like I said, Hey, I, you know, I wrote a, a, a good, a pretty darn good show in those pajamas. So, mm -hmm. which I wouldn't have had I been in that fancy dress at on a red carpet. So yeah, there's a silver lining. Yeah. So, um, uh... You know, the last time we talked to you, uh, you were telling us the origin of Pepper. And then oh. after we had talked, you returned as Pepper. So tell me, oh. how did it differ from first playing Pepper to coming back to playing Pepper again? Mm, that's an interesting question. Well, you know, I created a backstory mm -hmm. just because as an actor, we're, that's what we, are, we do. Um, uh the the backstory that i created for myself in asylum was different than the one that was bestowed mm. upon me for freak show mm. uh i'm not gonna tell you what my backstory was like mm. but i will say it pales in comparison to the one that they gave me mm. um i think ultimately it's not important whether you know what that story was it was only important that i have one you know um but i was obviously like just blown away with the story that they oh, gave yeah. me because it was oh my goodness i mean it's i i couldn't have dreamt for more i, I mean i remember coming back for freak show and and being you know working uh, kind of almost like an, a glorified extra you know what i mean like they would just need freaks around so there's pepper in the background like you know, delivering the fat lady food or playing with string or, you know, whatever. And I remember thinking like, why, like, why would they break their own rules, you know, mm -hmm. bringing a character back, uh, kind of changing their entire paradigm for this one little character just to have her like delivering the fat lady food and playing with string in the background. Like mm -hmm. there's gotta be more. Yeah. And, but of course, like I did that for a good nine episodes before that 10th episode. Yeah. So I didn't know. I just had to, I had faith that there was going to be more to this. And of course there was, but yeah, for a long it, it, time, I didn't, I didn't know either. <laughs> yeah. It was a pretty power episode. I kind of, I kind of wept because I felt really, I mean, it makes you feel, you see her backstory, you see where, how she came to the freak show and then she came to the asylum and all the, terrible things that happened to her is this you know like wow it's like even just hearing like you the little synopsis there uh -huh. like literally like i have maybe it's just cold in my house but i like that just like gave me shivers like poor, it's a, such a sad story it is a sad story you know you th you think you know why why did this happen to, why did this have to happen to her you know there's injustice everywhere and that's yeah. what i think maybe <laughs> why this sh this um maybe that's why th this story resonates for so many people is because it, it happens you know i mean the, the good thing about the only good thing is that she didn't end up in a glass jar like most of the rest of the cast oh god seriously yeah, yeah. <laughs> thankfully yeah. So do you think Pepper will be laid to rest or do you think maybe someday they may want to bring her back for another season? Ooh. And what would you like to see Pepper to Pepper? What you would like to see Pepper? Maybe even do your own backstory if they oh, let you. I would, I mean, listen, Pepper was the most fun role ever mm. to play. Um, she, you know, I, I got one I got two words of direction, and that was do schlitzy. Schlitzy mm -hmm. was that, um, you know, real life microcephalic that she was modeled after. And so that was like, it, first of all, it gave me so much freedom as an actress. As long as I was doing schlitzy, I was doing what they hired me to do. And that, so as an actress, as an improviser, especially, 
that was gave it gave me like unbridled freedom mm -hmm. um and also like i said just enough like it was good to have kind of this um uh what's what's the word see i don't talk anymore <laughs> <laughs> with uh with covid it's like uh, i rarely interact with humans so like uh -huh. when i do i'm like uh, blah, blah, blah. um <laughs> but you know it, it was just enough direction that i could um kind of maneuver my way but uh you know she, she was just so much fun to play that i you know i would have loved for this to just go season after season after season you know to be a uh gray's anatomy i wish you know yeah. <laughs> that would have been that would have been a dream but you know i don't know sometimes um sometimes great things come in small packages mm -hmm. you know it reminds me of when you go to a really fancy restaurant and they serve you like a filet mignon that's like this big and you need mm -hmm. a micro you know like we didn't see a whole lot of pepper and that maybe that's what part of what makes her so mm -hmm. kind of magical she's like this unicorn that you only get to see every now and then. And when she does, when you do, it's, it's pure magic. I don't know. Yeah. I would, of course, like, believe me, you can, I, I'd sign on in a heartbeat. So it's not me. It's uh, the powers that be. It's, it's up, that's up to them. Mm -hmm. um, but I will say, uh, so while I can't, you know, bring her back because technically I don't, own this character yeah. um at the same time this this new show that i told you about that i've written during this you know covid period mm -hmm. um is a real love letter to pepper to mm -hmm. fans to the show um and so I, i'm very excited for for folks to see it um you know i i i've done some one woman shows in the past and so this is just sort of a this is the trilogy mm -hmm. um but it's uh it's a perfect complement to to what I've done prior, but also, like I said, I think it's real fan friendly. Um, mm -hmm. You get to see me pre pepper, post pepper, as pepper, and um, so you know. While we didn't get to see a whole, you know, we didn't get to see a lot. Uh, uh, we didn't get to see like a Grey's Anatomy. Uh, amount of pepper mm -hmm. certainly but um i'm gonna give you more you're gonna see more of her at least good, from me good. you know as much as i'm allowed to show cool let's All talk right. about this picture right here so how that came out was that american horror premiere or a party that was at the emmys oh at the emmys that was at the emmys um that was the year that freak show was nominated uh -huh. um and so i i was there and uh i remember afterwards i um went to the fx party uh -huh. and uh you know beelined it for my crew mm -hmm. uh which of course included lady gaga at the time mm -hmm. because they were already working on hotel uh -huh. um and uh you know i saw my buddy finn who was there with her and he introduced me and um i remember she and i talked for a bit uh -huh. um, I obviously, you know, had to introduce myself because yeah. she wouldn't recognize me. But, yeah. um, uh, but of course, she knew the character. You know, she'd watched new pepper, so yeah. she knew the character, and uh -huh. uh, and she loved me. And oh, I mean, now my head is blowing. You know, I was like, what? Like Lady Gaga loves me. <laughs> um, but I remember at the end of our conversation, uh -huh. she um, actually stood up and. She was wearing a dress. That dress that she's wearing is literally like, it's like the size of like a bed. It was like yeah. a giant dress, which of course signaled to like all the paparazzi at the party, mm -hmm. like, oh snap, look, look who's look who's there. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden they started like flashing photos. And of course, I was like, oh my God, I wish I had a camera right now. Like, yeah. I'm, like, ah. Where is my, I remember I had a boyfriend at the time and he, uh -huh. he wasn't, the, I'd invited uh -huh. him to the party and he hadn't gotten there. I was literally like secretly like texting him under the table, like I'm with Gaga, get mm -hmm. here. Like what is uh -huh. wrong with you, dude? Anyway, um, he missed it. Uh, mm -hmm. And, um, but the point is here I am going like, where's my boat? Where's my boyfriend? Where's my phone? Uh -huh. Like I need a photo of this. Yeah. 
thinking, oh, duh, like every photographer in all of Hollywood is here taking this photo. Like, why do I need my phone? Why do I need my camera? Yeah. When, um, you get a pro shot. <laughs> when, yeah, I've got like yeah. 40 pro shots. Exactly. So um, anyway, all I needed to do was like Google m myself the next morning yeah. and there it is. You know, yeah. There's the picture. It was like all over. I remember when I saw that, I was like, what is over here, over there? And oh, then everywhere. like maybe Harvard, like a year right? later, there's two other pictures. There's one of you guys posing and then there's one you blow a kiss to her. But oh, the yeah. one that well, stands out, she, she kissed And I was like, I got to kiss her back. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And then it was saying that uh, her top fell open. That's what they, that was the headline of that night too. But oh. I didn't see any pictures of that. <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah, they were saying yeah that her top fell open or something like that. But they must have she must have stopped those photos. <laughs> I also remember it was like one of the hottest nights ever. Like mm -hmm. they have us like for the Emmys, they have these like um like a tent. Mm -hmm. Um the, like the red carpet is sort of like uh covered with this tent, which is nice, you know, it keeps you from being in the sun. But it ended up having this sort of like greenhouse effect where we're literally like perishing. Like people mm. were just like. But they don't have champagne or bottled water out there, huh? Oh, God, it was unbearable. So, yeah, I can only imagine like if her, you know, top was exposed, it mm. probably just felt it probably she needed it. Yeah. She needed to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway yeah so it was that was a it was a fun exciting night i do remember um i will finish that story though i mm -hmm. i ultimately gave that boyfriend hell i was like you missed it dude yeah like, it was me gaga and finn witch rock and where were you well i'll tell you he was actually cheating on me he oh. um he uh he met a guy oh uh, at at the goal at the at the party uh which of course i invited him to and um yeah um who knew you know hollywood we're full of yeah a lot of characters around here he was one oh, of yeah. them. but anyway uh yeah he missed he missed out yeah he, he definitely yeah. missed out yeah for sure yeah but now he gets to be, um, he's the subject of the, that new show I told you about. So oh, good, good, good. It all works out. You don't mess with me. You don't mess uh -huh. with me unless you uh, don't mind being a character. So speaking of uh, the Emmys, how did you feel about being nominated for Control Delete? Oh, I mean, that was awesome. Like, listen, it was, it was a, a little web series that I had, mm, I mostly wanted to be involved because uh, it was some friends of mine doing it. And I felt like um, I wanted to support them and seem like a fun character. And uh, it was a message that I felt was important. Like I, you know, um, the fact is I am pro-choice and as much as I'm not really political in that regard, I, I do appreciate um dramedies like i appreciate that comedy and drama are not black and white like there's the best comedies have some drama in them and vice versa and since when does an abortion clinic have to be all drama like yeah it's true it's actually for some people it's a workplace like any other so for her you know, for lorna it was like a hangout <laughs> oh exactly yeah. it's like her yeah <laughs> you seem like it was, she was like oh i'm gonna come here all the time and you just hang out yeah, mingle it's, yeah. it's just like it's the cheers bar you know yeah. she's got her, her like regular pool, <laughs> for sure yeah. so i i really appreciated that 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 um you know it was a workplace workplace comedy what's the big deal mm. um and so you know that's why i wanted to be involved knowing that there would be like a nomination for me in it was the last thing from my mind. Um, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I kind of wanted one for, for pepper on freak show. Yeah. I didn't get it. So, you know, I'll, I'll take it where it comes. <laughs> and then that looks like it looked like I was looking on uh, YouTube and, and Google looks like that was another fun night because you got to meet Henry Winkler and um, Ed Harris oh, yeah. and, and, and Lil Domlin. Oh, you're, yes. you're right next to Lindley Tomlin. I was like, what? My girl, my favorite. Your yeah. idol. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, 
like honestly like i am who i am and where i am because of lily tomlin like yeah. i remember being a little girl going to see her in her one woman show mm -hmm. search for signs of intelligent life in the universe uh -huh. um you know my parents took me to see that at the denver center in denver colorado yeah. and um and i just remember looking up there and thinking like that's that's what I want to do. Exactly yeah. that. And sure enough, I used to do her monologues for talent shows. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like, you know, um, and then and then later on, I actually, you know, of course, went on to write my own one woman shows. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I met her first, I was uh, on a committee for the Television Academy which um uh, she was uh, like on the board mm -hmm. and so i it was i would see her on a like monthly basis at at these board meetings mm -hmm. and i remember i used to act i was such a d dork i literally would like act like just too cool for school like mm -hmm. like i don't know who you are because i didn't uh -huh. want to it's almost like in school when you uh -huh. don't want the boy to know that like you like him like yeah. you act especially aloof mm. you know and so i was pulling like a super like i'm really attracted to you but i'm not letting you know that yeah um with her and um it wasn't until the very end when basically her term on this board was done we all went for this fabulous like argentinian steak dinner and mm. that's where i like basically outed myself and i was like i just want you to know like that was an act like i <laughs> love you i am an actress because of you and then i pulled out i had a bag full of like you know her comedy album and uh, her you know uh all the paraphernalia i'm not well other than of course my own like uh fan art i'm not a collector type i don't really have yeah. a lot of stuff um i mean i know that seems impossible because i'm literally like co covered with stuff right now but mm -hmm. the other rooms in the house are quite quite spare um but uh believe me when it comes to lily tomlin i'm a straight up mm -hmm. hoarder like i love her so much and yeah. um and so and she was couldn't have been more sweet she was you know um and 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 even then then when i was nominated she wrote me an email oh, wow. you know, congratulating me uh -huh. i mean like i mean she's just beyond <sighs> yeah. yeah i love her <laughs> so uh how many of the drawings do you have a pepper in your room oh or gosh that room? It looks I have like no it's a whole idea. time hundreds i mean i could give you a whole tour uh-huh it's uh i mean this is just one corner okay wow i see one of, of just you there a regular one in the back where is that one uh, right above if you go take to your left oh there's one yeah, of you there and then you. The top there the one in the black and white up top there yeah yeah there's me yeah well, so that's just me. Uh -huh. And then there's one of your face. Yeah. Yeah. That's just me. That's me. Yeah. There's a little bit of everything here. Wow. Do you have any of Pepper's clothing? Let's see the wardrobe back there. Did you keep I, anything? Of, did you keep anything of Pepper? No clothing, but yes, these are my ears. Oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> you either kept the nose. <laughs> Um, you know, I do have a nose. Uh, I, have a, I have a full face. Yeah. Um, I don't know how well those, you know, hold up. Like, I'm not sure that they'll hold up with uh, yeah. time. And but do you, do you have a, do you have the official pepper pop too? I do. Let's see. She's over here. Uh -huh. There she is. Oh, you got two. Oh no, no, that's another one. Oh, let's see. Oh no, that's just some that's Gaga. That's Gaga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I should have them like side by side kissing. Like kissing, yeah, after kissing, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just running out of room. So. so I remember too, you're also uh fluent in and Spanish and Portuguese. Have you auditioned mm -hmm. for any anything in Spanish or Portuguese or like novellas? You know, it's funny. <laughs> Hollywood especially is racist <laughs> um people don't like they they 
they listen with their eyes and they look at me and they don't necessarily think I could speak Spanish. And it happens all the time. Like it happens to me when I, you know, valet my car wow. and I hand my keys to the, you know, valet. Oh, aquí, aquí está la Chavez. And they're like, <laughs> like they don't understand. And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, oh, and it's only because they're like, Oh my God, what, what is this white girl doing yeah. speaking like fluent Spanish? Uh -huh. So, um, no, you know, I, I really rarely go out for, um, for, for novelas ever, ever, ever. Mm -hmm. Um, occasionally I'll do voiceover because they don't know what you look like. Yeah. Um, and that's always interesting. Like I remember one time going for a callback. And then um, saying, oh, here's here's the, um, you know, whatever, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of a super white girl named Bethany. <laughs> here's the Bethany sides. And I'm like, oh, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm here for Patricia. And they're like, uh, and then and then they're like, oh, like they can't believe that I that I met that same person. So you know, it's, it's a bummer on, on, you know, believe me, I don't know how many friends I've coached who call me up like, Naomi, I have an audition to play like some Latino character. Can you please, can, like, how do I say this? Like, can you, you know, coach me? And I'm like, why can't I get these auditions? Like, hmm. you know, conversely, I get like auditions to play like rabbis all the time. And I have to like, I have to read, like, he, do Hebrew, like, this prayers. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm saying. Like, I have to do the exact same things to my, like, you know, super Jewish friends. Like, mm -hmm. how do I say this? What, does this sound right? So it just is what it is. Like, you, we look a certain way, and that's what Hollywood wants it to be. It, it bums me out. Like, I know, having lived in Argentina, that there are people that look exactly like me living there. You know, uh, but for whatever reason, like, uh, you know, Hollywood, especially with Mexico right here, uh, you know, we have this sort of vision of what a Spanish speaker looks like. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like me. But it yeah, is what it is. sad because there's blonde, blue eyed Mexicans in Mexico. <laughs> of course. So. We all we know this. Um, yeah. But. Yeah. It's interesting. I'll never forget being in um, Barcelona, Spain, mm -hmm. and it was uncanny how many people asked me for directions. Like mm -hmm. everybody thought I was a local. And it's true, though. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. If you look around in, Bar in uh, Cat Catalonia, mm -hmm. everyone's petite, like fair skin, blue eye, dark hair. Like yeah. I've got I'm I look Catalana. Who knew? <laughs> they all don't look like Antonio Banderas. <laughs> I wish they did, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> I might not, I might have a boyfriend. If that yeah. I remember uh, also too, uh, you were telling us that he had a crush on uh, Bruno Campos. Have you bumped into oh. him since? since uh, no, seen him oh there? my no? God. I mean, I to this, to this day, I don't think he knows who I am or uh. any of it. I mean, I have since been to Brazil, like uh -huh. told the story on like for uh -huh. massive panel, like for Q&A, like in fluent Portuguese, mm -hmm. where they're like, wait, why do you know Spanish? Uh, why do you know Portuguese? And I'm like, well, I don't know if you know this guy named Bruno Campos. It's like, it's crazy to me. Like, yeah. he, I don't, I still don't think he knows. I think if I'm not mistaken, he's like a lawyer in... No. Chicago or something now he's oh. not or maybe New York I don't know but he's I would, not in the I would have thought you guys would have bumped into each other at the FX party because he had nip and tuck remember? well exactly I mean we're not we're we yeah. if, if he were in mm -hmm. the industry now I know yeah. for a fact we'd know each other because yeah. we there's too many connections but well who, who's in your uh your friends list I mean who who uh do you keep in touch with like from American Horror Story or okay, any American Horror Story? previous previous uh, shows. I mean, during COVID, no one. Well, I mean, like in general, if we didn't have COVID, who would who would like be you be talking to or going and hanging out at a bar or club? Of right. Um, you know, it's it's hard to say. Uh, the freaks and I 
traveled extensively together right after um right after freak show it's like we were kind of a, a package deal you know what i mean like I, you know because i'd i'd already done a lot of the convention scene but they hadn't and so this was like a chance to like you know, I I could almost piggyback off of their autograph sales, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so, you know, I went I, like I went to Russia with Ben Wolf, the little uh -huh. the guy who played Meep. Um, all of us. I mean, Matt Fraser, the the um, uh, with the flippers for hands and mm -hmm. Rose Siggins, uh, like with Susie and uh, Erica Irvin, who played Amazon Eve, like the f five of us, four of us, because we lost Ben, of course, early in the year, we were like, I mean, we would rendezvous once a week at some Comic-Con somewhere in the world. It was pretty outrageous. Um, I would say uh, right after Freak Show, we would, we used to get together, uh, when I say we, I mean, it's like whoever was in LA. Like I remember Chrissy Metz, mm -hmm. who's of course now one of the stars of This Is Us. Yeah. But she played the fat lady on Freak Show. Mm -hmm. um, she would join us at the, um, there was like a this gay bar in, in uh, Hollywood that would uh, screen the episodes. And I didn't have that facts. I didn't have c cable. So I didn't have a way to watch the show if I wasn't at like a, a bar watching it live. Um, so, uh, who else that came to that? I don't know. Um, yeah, I would say, you know, and I, I, of course, like saw everybody again when I came back for apocalypse and of course, any kind of award shows, you know what I mean? Like mm. at, the, at the Emmys, you know, that was a good opportunity to see, you know, Finn and Evan and Sarah and, you know, the usual suspects. Yeah. Just because, you know, they were nominated for Emmys. So when fans meet you, uh, what do they usually ask? They usually ask for you to do Pepper or do a line from the show or do they just, do they recognize you for um, Pepper? Or do they recognize you for like control alt delete or any other uh, role you've yeah, played? if they recognize me, um, uh, if they, I mean, it depends on where we are. And, you know, obviously like if I've flown to a specific place to do a, you know, a Comic-Con or whatever, that's the more likely time um, yeah. for people to recognize me. Um, and also, uh, yeah, I would say like gay bars, I get recognized uh -huh. at. Like uh, there's certain worlds that sort of where I'm on the radar. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, as far as qu questions people ask, uh, I would say, yeah, like, oh, can you sing the name game or uh, say meatloaf? Meatloaf, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, they all want to know about, you know. Or play with me. <laughs> what is what is Evan P Peters like? Yeah. And, you know, what is um, what does he smell like? That's the big question. What does he smell like? I'm like, do you think I go around sniffing people? Or Emma um, Roberts. <laughs> yes. Are they still together? You know, what's yeah. that? Uh, I don't think so. Now I've seen her with another guy. So I know that's yeah, a, no, those are good. Those two are gone. I think else, she just had a, ba a baby with another guy. So yes, yes, yes. So that's mm, yeah. I don't have to answer that question anymore. But yeah, yeah I mean, good. it's sort of the same. It's the same always. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you have to it, I I also understand, like, it's exciting to meet someone that from your TV, you know, <laughs> and um, so I, I can't, it's not that person's fault that I've been asked that question 10 million times yeah. in my life. You know what I mean? So you have to make, that's part of being an actor is making everyone feel um, like that's such an original question. Oh, and well, let me think. <laughs> Let me think of an answer, you know, so. So tell us about uh, 1BR. I mean, it was, a, it was a really good movie and I guess it, it was like number one in Japan. That's what I, that's what I was, I read was or saw one? somewhere. I know it's been, um, 
or on Netflix well, Japan. It was, it was number one on Netflix here. Uh -huh. And, um, but yeah, on the iTunes charts, it's been number one in Australia, New Zealand, like a bunch of Middle East countries, uh, the uh, Egypt, mm -hmm. Qatar, Bahrain, like all sorts of places that I probably couldn't even find on a map. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's had a really, really, um, it's been very successful. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, it was a low, very low budget movie. Um, mm -hmm. And so, which makes it even more amazing because let's face it, like a lot, you know, so often with these low budget movies, they look cheap. Like, yeah. and this didn't. This no, looked, it didn't. It looked like a, a, a real movie, but they didn't pay us like real movie. No. Like real movie. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know the, 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 the name of the actress, the lead actress, but I remember she got, I was watching that. Like, God dang. I said, for a low budget, I mean, they're making her go through hell and they're making her do this and that. And the, that's uh, that's the, the what nails we do. Through the, 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 the nails through the hands. That's for low budget. That's like pretty graphic. <laughs> well, but she, Spoiler alert, guys. <laughs> it's not like it was really her hand. Yeah. Well, I know I mean, that, but this thing with this for something low budget look real. It's like it's something oh, yeah. they're doing a in a high budget, you know, cost movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 but you know it's interesting, like they um i mean they they skimped it in so many ways like if you watch the movie and and mm. it, listen but you wouldn't notice it unless you look yeah. for it yeah like when if if and when you watch the movie you'll see our um producer alok mishra mm. over and over and over he's literally like an extra all the time just because they were they were out of uh -huh. you know they needed humans they needed real bodies and you know the friends and family that were lined up to help out that day like didn't show, and so you know they throw a loke in there. And anyway, it just it's a, it was a real labor of love in that regard. You know our people like mm -hmm. a loke and just our producers in general were, you know, wearing just so many hats, uh, hats mm -hmm. that on a big budget thing, you know, they have someone to do that. Like mm -hmm. you know anything, like anything horror story, they've got. Yeah, they've got a person hired just to put the lens in my eye. You wow. know what I mean? They've got a person hired just to pull the tent to make it look windy. Mm -hmm. They've got a person hired. I mean, they've got a person for everything. Whereas, you know, low budget, that costs money, and they mm -hmm. didn't have it. So it, it's all the more testament to that to them that they managed to pull this off without, you know spending money because money is how you can fix anything by just throwing some money at it in Hollywood mm. and they just didn't have it to even throw. So. Why don't you tell us about your uh, project you're working on or give us a little sneak peek. Oh, okay. Tell us, give us a little pitch about it. Sure. Sure. Uh, so like I said, it's so uh, it is a one woman show, um, which you know, at first with COVID, I was like, well, how is this going to go? We're not gathering in theater. You know, Broadway's closed. Like, when are we ever going to be in a large group again? But, you know, at the same time, since I did my first shows, now these, you know, one-hour comedy specials are a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't used to be. So, um, and, and let's face it, it's not hard to shoot a one-woman show. Like, mm -hmm. all I need is me, uh, you know, a couple couple camera guys, maybe a sound guy, director. Like this is probably the most COVID friendly shoot mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I see no reason why, why this isn't going to happen. Uh, and I'm, you know, working very hard to make, make sure it does. Um, and, and yeah, because who cares if whether we're not in a theater or not? Like, I want to sell it to a Netflix or Amazon and and mm. ha and do it that way anyway. So the crazy thing is, this dream of mine um, is probably even more likely to happen because of COVID. You know what I mean? Like, mm. um, the worst case scenario would be, oh, I just have to rent out a theater and do it my the way I did, you know, my my first two. Mm -hmm. um, but the fact is. Like now, the worst case is actually less likely to happen than my my best case scenario, which actually is quite likely to happen. 
I think. Um, anyway, as far as pitches to the shows go, show goes, um, it's an, well, I'll tell you, it's called American Horror Story. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's a, um, an anthology series mm-hmm. uh, of autobiographical tales of self-compromise. Um, it's, um, it's a sort of, uh, third in the trilogy, uh, that is, um, the evolution of Naomi Grossman. Mm-hmm. This sort of chronicles my history of hustling oh. from the, um, odd jobs I've had to the, even my even odder taste in men. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Like I, the one, the, the one that Ms. Gaga. <laughs> yeah. The one that exactly. He's in there, believe me. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, that's what AWS is all about. All right. Well, thank you for your time, Naomi. Of course, great thank having you, you so on. Have me. Yeah, you have to when you have the when the project comes on TV, you have to come and talk again. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Project. Well, would, probably not not to. until next year, unless you do it inside, you know, somewhere where it's safe. Who knows? We'll see. I know. Um, you know, I, at this point, I'm just doing March and memorizing. That's all I can worry about now. I, I can't think about the the rest is ahead of me. So so, so no other no other new projects besides the the show. I mean, I, I nothing coming up with COVID right now. It's so hard to say. Yeah. You know, um, like there's things that are rumored, uh-huh. but until they're happening they're not hap- you know there's nothing really to talk about like so we'll just be doing zoom shows for, for the next couple of years probably <laughs> I mean, which you probably could do a zoom show you know if you got creative you know with the green screen and everything no thanks yeah <laughs> you know i don't know I, yeah. I i like i did a um a low budget movie recently mm-hmm. called um will you be my quarantine uh, yes. um uh, in which I, yeah, I play like a boss uh, on in a Zoom uh, um, situation. So, you know, like there are things that are, are coming out. It's just they're not things that I have any kind of control over. Like I can't, especially with COVID, it's impossible to know when something's going to be released or, what, or, or if it's just completely on hold. Like there's other projects that I like, like I said, they're either rumored to happen or I already shot them. And now we're just sort of mm-hmm. waiting. They're in sort of post-production limbo. Like, but it's just like, I, I don't even know. I'd almost have to like, look at my IMDb to, to see and say, oh yeah, that's happening. I don't know if that's happening. Uh, mm-hmm. That was supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. All like, I, that's why I like kind of being a, a writer, producer, you know, hyphen it is that those those are the projects that I feel like I have some control over and can really speak with authority about. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, mm-hmm. thank you again for coming on our show, Naomi. It was great of talking course. to you. Enjoyed it. it was fun. Like I said, I hope you can come back. You know, we'd always love to have you on. Uh sure. Happy to. All love right. It. Cool. So this has been Patrick with the Mad Bros Media Zoom show and podcast coming soon with the Naomi Grossman from American Horror Story, 1BR, and your new show, A-H, would be A- AWS. A-W-S, yeah, AWS. All right. This is Patrick with Mad Bros Media with Naomi Grossman. All right, take care, Naomi. Thanks so much. All right. <laughs>